tap, stitch and tap, making a pair of shoes. Le scarpine per ballare, ballare, balleremo tutti il dì. Le scarpine per ballare, ballare, balleremo ancora così. In this video, I would like to show you how to make the derby shoe. I'll be making it in a children's size, but of course the same processes are used no matter what size of shoe you want to make. Um, the reason why I chose the derby shoe is that <clears throat> there's a lot of processes in making it, and if you learn um, all these processes, you can make just about any shoe in either the slow shoes um, for women or slow shoes for children books. This derby is the shoe that we'll make in this DVD. Um, it's one of the more complex shoes. It has two parts, the vamp out here in front that covers the toes, and this is what we'll call the heel section back here. Um, and you can see there's a seam required there, and maybe a little support here at the back of the heel, so it has a heel cover. This also has a little toe box inside, an extra piece of leather, vegetable tan leather, that um, will allow the toe area to keep its shape and to um, make sure that it doesn't come uncemented. I've stitched this line across the um, far edge of it so that um, it, will, it will not come undone. So we'll look at the patterns that we're going to be using. Uh, the pattern set comes with um, the heel section here and and here we have the vamp. So I have these cut out. As I make the derby, I'm not going to punch out all the holes that you see at the bottom edge of the pattern. I'm going to make this shoe over a last. Um, I'm going to do the sole first. To me, somehow that's uh, not as much fun, so I'd like to get that out of the way. And to do that, I will um, get a piece of vegetable tan leather. This is about four to five ounce leather. You could use something heavier, but I like children's shoes to be uh, very flexible and as lightweight as possible, as much like if you, the child was barefooted as possible. So I'll use this four to five ounce vegetable tan leather. And um, usually I use a silver pen to go around a pattern. I'm not sure you'll be able to see that so well. This is a silver gel pen that you can get in any office supply store. Um, so I'll go around it with a black marker, which would, of course, not be the way I would ever do it in actuality, but I want you to be able to see. Okay, so there's my sole. I'll take some leather cutting scissors. Sometimes I cut things like this with a rotary cutter. Um, some people would use a, a knife, an exacto knife, but uh, these leather cutting scissors are fine for this weight of leather. I'm going to cement this to the natural rubber that I like to use for soling. This is. Um, Natural rubber comes from um, a company that you can uh, get the details about the, on my website, on uh, my WordPress blog. Uh, and it has all the materials, every resource that you would possibly need for making uh, stitch down shoes uh, would be, is available on my blog. So this natural rubber is from rubber trees from Malaysia. Um, and so this makes a good sole because it's so flexible 
and also um, it's very you feel the earth under your feet so it it's really nice um, I like to wear it myself the only issue with it is if you are in a place where it gets really really hot and your sidewalks get really hot and you're going to be walking downtown then uh, this may not be the best to use because it can get uh, gummy and so I'm going to take my pattern and trace around around this so I'll use the black marker again you know I would usually use the silver the silver gel pen the silver gel pen can uh, wash right off Okay, so I'll cut this out. Okay, got both my pieces for the sole here. Um, I will put cement on them so that it can be dry. In shoemaking, I'm almost always using contact cement, meaning that you have to put the cement on both surfaces that you want to uh, cement together, let them dry, and when they're totally dry, then you put them together. Um, and I've searched for the most non-toxic contact cement that I can find, and I've found one that I think is really um, meets all the needs that I have, and that's also on my um, WordPress blog, um, the source for this cement. Uh, so I've put it into a little jar. I. Uh, use brushes like like these. Um, seems like these two sizes um, always work, one or the other. I'll use this littler one and um, just get the cement. I store the brushes for the cement in a tall jar, tall enough so the brush can go in there without uh, being bent. So there's the cement on the leather part. Now I'll get the cement. So this little pen is just hold, helping me to hold it in place. I put some um, laundry soap into water in the jar that I keep the brushes in. Evidently having a high pH into the alkaline range um, keeps the brushes from getting stiff. Okay, now that's all done. I feel just like I'm on a cooking show here, putting that aside for a moment and uh, getting my brushes, my brush into this taller container so I can use it as many times as possible. Okay, there's my vamp. Now the heel section. Uh, this pattern works fine if you um, don't cut it out at the back of the heel at all. It uh, grabs right here at this point mid-heel usually and so um, so it can just be cut all in one piece. But I want to show you the kind of stitching that you would do up the back of the heel if you did have it curved in. So um, I'm going to cut the pattern along that line. Two Cut nicely with these scissors. Uh, you need to do a couple things. One is, of course, never cut to the to the uh, tip of your scissors, but instead, um, just operate in an inch or so right here, and um, pull on the part that you've just cut. So there's actually some energy exerted here, and then just keep sliding the scissors forward. So you know, I'm pulling a 
Okay, we've got our three pieces that we need right now. Um, I'll cut out the heel support piece a little later. So the first thing I want to check is there's some place that I need to skive. Skive means to thin the leather down so that it's not bulky when you have two pieces that overlap. So in other words, if I put these two together this way, um, and I didn't thin it down, then I'd have kind of a bulky area and that inside piece might rub on the foot. So, um, so I want to uh, skive this to thin it down. Theoretically, I'm making both pieces that overlap about half of their original thickness, so when you put it together, it feels just like the rest of the shoe. So I want to skive in that area on both of these pieces. And when I put the heel support piece in place, that's going to make it uh, twice as thick back here. And that's really challenging when I'm trying to turn out a seam for making the stitch down. So I know I want to skive back there also. Now, there are many different ways to skive. <clears throat> I'm using the simplest way, and that is using this little tool called a skiver or a skife or a safety beveler. And I'm skiving on this piece of, of safety glass from a junkyard. So hopefully you can find something like this too. Um, it works really nicely. And so I want to skive in this area. And uh, so I'm going to skive with little little cuts kind of perpendicular to the seam, holding on tight here. Okay, I have this area skived now at the back of the heel. And um, I'll make my heels about an inch wide on each half, so I'll be skiving about that amount. Okay, I need to skive the vamp also. So I'm going to come around here. This feels thin, that it comes to a feather edge, so nothing will rub inside the shoe on the foot. My blade's starting to get a little dull. They need to be changed quite often. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is put an eyelet reinforcement piece in place. So I'll cut this out of the pattern. And um, use a piece of thin leather. There's pigskin that you could use. Uh, pretty strong up here. It's different qualities in different locations on the animal. And I'm going to cut them out just a little bit beyond the line so I can cut it off later. Bottom edge, I'll cut straight. And I'll put cement on these. I can use this pattern to show me where the line is to put for putting the cement on the heel section where the eyelet reinforcement strip needs to go. Okay, so get my brush out of the water. The soapy water. Kind of squeeze out the excess water. Since it's non-toxic, it doesn't matter if you get this on your skin and um, the 
fact that there's no odor is really nice. Before we stitch the vamp to the heel quarters, we want to get the eyelet reinforcement strip in place. So I'll line it up. line that I made previously. And now I can cut off the excess. If you're going to stitch along the top edge, um, which really isn't necessary, but um, is another way to add a decorative element, element and might keep the top edge just a little bit tighter, um, we'll do that before putting, attaching the heel section to the vamp. I guess it isn't exactly required that you put stitching on the bottom edge of the eyelet reinforcement strip, um, but in case you want to, I'll show you how I would do this. So I did make a line with the wing divider here that's about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And let's see, I want it to look good here, so I'm going to start I punch here. So I've got a, um, a thick plastic piece underneath where I'm going to be punching so the punch holes can go down into it. And uh, this is called a maul and um, it certainly does last forever. I've been using this for a long time and um, I think the weight really helps get those, get the punch all the way through the leather first time. So I, I, but I do kind of rock this punch back and forth from one side to the other. And then the last hole that I made, I put one prong into that hole. So that means that the spacing, you can always be sure that you're spacing these punch holes exactly in where they belong. Okay, now I'm going to turn the shoe over and mark those holes again for the top edge. So I make a ridge and um, actually here it would, at this curve I'm not going to be able to go around that curve with this tool. So there is a one punch tool that um, I'll get and use for this area. Here we go with this one punch tool. It makes the same shape of the punch. So I'm on my own here as far as spacing. Just do my best. Once I get around the corner, then I'll go back to the four-prong tool. I'm going to continue down the, the back seam. So. Okay, so I'll do the same on the other 
heel section piece and then we'll do the stitching. The holes are all punched so it's time to stitch. Um, since I'm going to stitch around the eyelet reinforcement piece and down the back I need quite a bit of thread so being really generous here and again we'll put a needle on each end. These are called harness needles. They are kind of blunt so that they don't split the threads up um, as a sharp needle might. Now this is where I'm going to start right here at the top edge of the eyelet reinforcement strip and I'm going to go down and then up around um, the top edge then down the back of the heel. So one thread goes down and then back up again. So I'm holding this thread that's already in the hole again out of the way. Now I'm going to even out these threads. Okay. So down. And up. There's actually, if you get the same rhythm going of placement of these threads in the hole, they can actually look, look uh, neater than if you just kind of randomly do it. So each time I'm trying to go down the same way, down and then holding the thread over to the side and then I bring this one up to what feels like a little higher on top of that previous stitch. So I'm always crossed so that the thread that's coming up is on top. I have I've learned a lot over the last couple of years working on these pattern books and, and DVDs, and so I've changed. I'm replacing what I had originally originally said about the way to um, make the line and punching the holes between the vamp and the heel section when you're wanting to stitch them together. Um, Originally, I talked about punching out holes with a rotary punch. Um, since I found this punch that is really um, actually makes slits, and it makes slits every quarter inch, so it you don't have to put quite as many stitches in because you've got a little each stitch is a little bit bigger. But um, this being slits, I, I think it looks really nice. And so it's much easier to just um, tape or cement the two pieces together and then use this punch to make the stitching holes. Another thing that, I've, uh, that I'm using quite a bit now is um, double-sided tape. In my resource list, I've mentioned a place that I get it from. Um, I think a lot of places that have materials for scrapbooking um, has this kind of tape. So what I'm suggesting that you do is to uh, make a silver line so you use your um, compass to do this and no matter what size the shoe is 
I would use about three-eighths of an inch overlap between the vamp and the heel section. So you can make that line. Then I will put the double-sided tape. You know, sure you could cement this, but this is so much faster. And since it's just going to hold it temporarily, um, it doesn't need to be that strong because we'll have it stitched before long. And so this, so now I have my um, double-sided tape here. Sometimes it doesn't come off quite as easily on leather as it does on paper, but let's see if I'm lucky this time. And I am. Okay, so I'm going to line this up with that silver line and know that I've got about three-eighths of an inch of an overlap. I'd like for my stitching to be about an eighth of an inch actually from that first from the uh, join there. So I made a line eighth of an inch from the edge onto the heel section and now I'm going to take my thonging chisel is actually what this is called uh, chisel because it makes more it makes a slit instead of a hole and each time as I move it I put the first prong into that last hole so that I have equal spacing and uh, there I have stitching holes if I want two rows then I can slightly widen my compass make another silver line and make another row of stitches. Try my best to make sure these are parallel. So then I'll erase my silver marks with a piece of um, natural crepe stoling and I'd be ready to stitch and this process is I think much faster and more accurate than punching out holes individually. So I have stitched the vamp to the heel section on one side. Now I'll do this side so that you can see it but I'm going to do the same thing and that is take my harness needles and my thread and I'm going to do that um, running stitch. By the way, if um, your needles keep sliding off of your thread you can go near the end of your thread and uh, even though this is a blunt pointed needle you can go between a couple of strands and make a little um, loop so that your needle doesn't come off and you can keep sliding this back as you're, you're sliding it forward as your thread gets shorter. So I'm putting this needle on both ends. I think I'll go through this one also. Okay. Having the two lines of stitching just make it a little more sturdy. Um, and I don't want these stitches to be to feel rough on the inside. So you can take a rubber mallet or a hammer and flatten them out. I'm using the same simultaneous running stitch to stitch um, these two lines of stitching that um, join the vamp with the heel section. I've got some pen lines here which of course I would just use a silver pen if this were the actual shoe. Uh, so I've got my stitching done on one of the lines of stitching and now I'm going across 
um, to the other side and I'm doing what I described before of um, always going in first from the top into the next hole holding that thread over to the side and um, and the new thread that I put in I'm always going to put it as far forward as I can in the in the um, hole what I'm aiming for is to have these stitches all look exactly the same and uh, that's how you do it when I get to the end here I'll make a square knot and then I'll run the threads back up under a few lines of, of, oh, under a few stitches okay so that's as far as I can go so I'll go to the back side uh, so this time I'm doing left over right the next thing I'm doing right over left so that makes a square knot and it's down here at the bottom where the foot isn't going to feel it and then I'll just run these ends under a couple of threads and uh, that will finish off the stitching then just give it a clip Oh, and then in the other side, I'd already made the eyelet holes, so let's do that on this side too. So I've got those holes punched out. I'm going to use my silver pen. And on my rotary punch, I'm going to use the biggest or second to the largest hole, put a piece behind there, Now, if you want a toe box, we'll, I'll demonstrate that now. Um, it keeps the shoe looking the same in the toe area. It's kind of, of uh, made a little solid area that doesn't drape down and show the shape of your, te of your shoes, of your toes. <laughs> doesn't show the shape of your toes. Um, most shoes I wear, I don't, I don't mind. I just, I don't put a toe box in. But um, if you want it to look a little dressier, then you can have a toe box that doesn't uh, conform to the, to the shape of your toe. So there's this line on the vamp pattern that you can use to make the toe box, or you can make this any shape. Um, and especially if it's something that you want to stitch, you can change the shape of the of that top edge. So I'm going to make a line here, putting the pattern in place. Then I'll put a line um, where I should put the cement. So I just tore this little little flap like so I can use it, but I'm not cutting it off all the way. So I've got this area then that I will put the toe box into. I've made a pattern 
from this piece. So I'll take another piece of vegetable tan leather, since that, when it gets moistened, will um, take a shape, and then it can be, uh, after it dries, it will be hard. And um, let's see, so I want to cut it out this way. So it, it will be hard, be in that raised up area. Um, I think this would only work to make a toe cap if you have um, lasts that are going to give the shape to your shoe at the end. And we're going to make this little shoe over a last. So this is where a toe box would make any sense. So I'm just going to put cement on, on this and on that area on the back of the vamp and then let that contact cement dry. See, while we're waiting for that cement to dry, I can um, st start stitching up the back of the heel. So I've got four threads dangling here, two from each side. I'm only going to use two of these threads to st stitch up the back of the heel. So the other two are just going to be um, caught as I, as I go along so that they'll end up down here at the bottom. So I'm going to put my needle at each end. I'm going to do a different stitch. This is called an X and a bar stitch. The X part is means that it's just like a cross stitch. Um, it goes from one side across to the other. I took one of these threads, a long one, and brought it across to the other side. And now I'm going to go back in the hole I just came out of and back up to the other side. So now I'm going to draw the two sides together. Um, this area right here comes in at the top of the heel. Um, if you have something, if you have a higher shoe, like this is more of a chuck a boot, it can be. Um, uncomfortable if um, it's not open in the back. I mean, you might be able to flare this side, this piece out here and it would, it could then still be comfortable as a, as a child walks, but one, the easy way to deal with it is just make a slit, which what we have here. So now I have these two threads. Oh, also the, the extra two threads that I have, I just kind of threaded them through those holes. Um, so to do the cross stitch, I'm over on the outside of the shoe. I'm crossing over to the next holes down on the inside of the shoe. And put my other needle on here. Fasten it. Okay, so now I'm going to cross that stitch over. So I've got an X here. I pull it tight. To make this stitch extra strong, I, um, I'm going to make a bar at the bottom of it. So that means take one thread and I come back up. 
and just go across from one side to the other at the base of that X. I've got my X and now I've got my bar. And so I go across, make that bar, and come right back up. Anytime you pick up a thread, you're not done with it until you come back up to the top surface again. So like this thread, I'm not done with it. It's got to come up. Now, usually I do this so that the hourglass shape, which is what you get with the X and the bar at the bottom, uh, is on the inside of the shoe if I'm going to put a heel cover on. Because it's a little nicer looking and it um, doesn't make quite so many passes of the thread over in one area, which can make a bump. So I've, got, I've gone down to the next hole on the other side with one thread and then come up. And now I'm going to the other thread down, across, and then I'm making that bar. and coming right back up on the other side, on the inside of the shoe. Okay, and I'll just continue with these until I get to the base, then I'll make a square knot and this back of the heel will be stitched up. I stitched up the back of the heel and now we're ready to cover the seam with the heel support piece and um, to do that we need to put cement back in this area as well as on the back of the little heel support piece. So first this has to be skived so I'll show you that again. You can take either little chops or try to get a strip skived off. Okay, so then I, after I had the skive, I would put cement on it and um, using my pattern I'd find out where the cement needs to go on the back of this heel section. I've got another piece that I have already skived and put cement on and it's dry and I put cement on here and it's dry too so I'm ready to go. I'll line this center of the heel support piece up with that seam. It'll cover that top uh, bar stitch there and then go down so that it's centered at the bottom, too. And then bring it around and... Complete positioning of the heel support. Now I'm going to... Um, punch holes around the edge, so I'll be punching holes through the heel support and the shoe behind it. Let's see, maybe I'll start with it right side out. I'll draw a line with the wing divider, wing dividers. and get the punch out. So I'm punching holes in both layers, so then afterwards I'll just do the, the same running stitch. Stitch it in place. OK, 
okay. Got these holes punched around the edge so that I can use the running stitch and stitch those in place and you can see it's open above there for the um, chaka boot. Imagine that we do want um, a piece in here, vegetable tan leather, it has to be veg tan to be uh, moistened and then uh, hardened into a shape that we want. So um, put cement on this earlier, but it of course makes more sense to uh, skive it first. And um, this front edge that goes over the instep, or over the ball of the foot actually, um, we want this to be as thin as possible. So I'm going to skive it down to that feather edge again. Okay, I have one that I have uh, already skived and cemented, so I'll go ahead and put this in place. Make sure that edge there is well cemented. I would take a rubber mallet or a hammer and um, make sure that's this little anvil is nice to have. Now we could stitch that. Um, I don't think I'm going to on this sample pair, um, but if I were going to, I might, I would um, use, this, do, use the same technique. A wing divider makes a groove along here, a little ridge punch with your holes and um, then with a running stitch, go back and forth until you've stitched that front edge on and then make sure that you pound these stitches afterwards so it's in, we're really sensitive across this part of our foot and, and some kids are particularly sensitive. So um, once we get this stitched on, then we're ready to last the shoe. Um, so I have the, the sole is prepared for that. And here's the last that we're going to use, which is the right size for a five and a half inch long foot. So the bottom of this measures five and a half inch, five and a half inches. Uh, you, actually, that is, would be for a child with a five and a half inch foot if you measured them from the wall out. So that it's actually a, a longer distance. And so that would give the a little bit of toe room, but um, always you've got to make models first with leather that's not good or old felt, something to make a model, try it on the child um, before you use any of, uh, materials that you don't want to ruin. I've got it laced, I've got the heel cover, the heel support stitched in place, and the toe box is in place. Um, we're going to put this over this last. Um, I put some information on my blog as, well, as how to find lasts. Um, so hopefully you will be able to do that and have lasts to work uh, with in the, size of the sizes of the children that you're wanting to make shoes for. I'm going to moisten this toe box a little bit. Get it. I'm trying to Kind of stay away from the cement, but so that it will mold. And uh, just get it damp. Okay, the sole should have about a quarter inch sticking out all around. Um, and to hold this in place, I will nail it. And so this is the standard practice for shoemakers everywhere is 
um, nailing soling to the bottom of a last. Um, but usually most shoemakers wouldn't have that quarter inch added. It would, the sole would be just exactly matching the bottom of the last. With stitch downs, um, it does have that little lip around the edge. Um, then there's nails made for this purpose. These are um, blued brads, six eights, or number eighteens. I usually make a hole first, especially for this crepe. It's kind of spongy to get a nail into. Then I put the nail in, and uh, there's a nice hammer called a lasting hammer, and so you can use that, but um, I'm sure other hammers would work. Doesn't have to go all the way in, just so it's not going to move around. And I have to check and see if I've got this all in the right place. I think so. So now I'll put another nail up in the toe area. Okay, then I'm, I'm going to make a mark that shows me where the center of the heel is. I'm going to extend that to the side of the sole. And then a mark shows me where the center of the toe is. And you always make those marks in relationship to the last. It's not something you can make beforehand but uh, you want it lined up with your last is really determining the amount of space inside the shoe and its orientation. So I've now I know what the where the center of the back of the heel is um, by the seam there and so I'm going to seat this place right here at the center of the heel first and to do that I'm going to kind of pinch it up and use uh, another tool called lasting pliers. So these are really good squeezers. So I'm squeezing both layers, the, the boot and the heel support, up. And I'm going to seat that right at that center line. And I'll, I'm going to adhere it just a little bit further, maybe not even an inch, but just a little bit. So. Then I take those pliers and give it a good squeeze. This is with that same non-toxic cement, so really the whole shoe is being made in a very ecologically sustainable way. Then I've got my center, the toe point here, that I've marked from the pattern, and that's where I'm going to next last it. And of course it's got that toe box, but hopefully it's well moistened so um, it will bend as you would like for it to. Okay, so I've mashed it there. I need to make sure I've got these points here look like they're across from each other in this kind of uh, derby type shoe. It, you do want it to look symmetrical, so that looks good. So now I go to the ball of the foot and the lasting pliers work kind of like um, you've got a fulcrum here which allows you to pull and then then you put your finger on where you've pulled and take the pinchers out, the pliers out and then squeeze and I'll take another squeeze or two just to anchor this and then I'll go to the other side because I don't want to pull it too, par too far one way or the other so I'm pulling on this side, then my finger's holding it in place, and I'm then going to mash it down. 
then I can um, line it up back here just pull it in place mash it down all the way back there to the heel and um, here I've got some threads that I want to cut the ends off of so I'm putting this in place too don't really have to use the lasting pliers except to squeeze it but my fingers are pushing it in place so it lines up with the sole when you're making bigger shoes you want to use the last as the, in that fulcrum kind of way um, everywhere on the shoe because bigger pieces of leather they're going to they stretch differently at different parts of the hide so you want to make sure that it's not going to be too baggy or or too tight okay so now the only place left is here between the front of the shoe and um, the ball here it's extending out a little bit I think I'll just cut a little bit off it seems like it always depends on the leather how thin or thick or tightly grained it is of how much it's going to pull but this feels good okay so I've got the shoe lasted Now I'm going to punch holes all the way around the edge and then uh, using a stitching awl I'll stitch stitch the shoe together. After that it it could be you could say it was done, but we'll we will sand the edge, assuming that you have a belt sander and then maybe buff it a little bit. Um, but it's well on its way here. I want to show you how helpful having just these little felt lasts can be, especially when you're adhering the upper to the soling. Um, so I use the center seam pattern that comes with the children's shoemaking book. And I've got felt here and uh, some um, stiff pellon down below. And uh, I need to anchor this to the sole, so I'm just going to use a piece of duct tape made into a circle. Usually um, these lasts are nailed to the sole, but felt doesn't work that way. So then I make a mark back at the where the heel seam is and up here where the toe seam is. So I just continue that line right down here. Then I take my completed upper starting at the back of the heel. I find that mark. I've got a couched seam here and I can adhere the um, upper a little bit around the heel. Come up here now I can kind of see how my shoe drapes. There we go. So I adhere this. And then kind of gathering up in the toe area. And then can stretch it out along the side of the shoe. And then gathering, if need be, again up here in the toe area, which is fine. You do need it kind of gathered to pull it up. And, uh, and so that shows you how useful having this little, this little mold is in your shoemaking operation. Okay, to make the holes, I've found this punch that I'm so happy to found. It's an um, Osborne punch that 
makes slits that are a quarter inch apart from each other. So I didn't know there was any punch around that would do that, um, to have that spacing. It's just, just exactly what I want. Uh, I think I'll take these nails out so I can put the shoe down squarely on this uh, surface here. So I'm going to try to hold this punch straight up and down and right next to the last I'm punching through actually the two layers of leather. Um, you don't really need to make holes through the rubber soling. It, the stitching all will go through that without any holes punched first. So you can see you don't need the um, punching holes from the pattern if you make your footwear over a last. A lot easier to use a punch and make holes in both the upper and the sole at the same time. This punch has um, a one prong punch available with it, so I'll use that if I get to some uh, area that's really curved. The holes have been punched, these kind of uh, slit-like holes have been punched all the way around the edge, so we're ready to stitch. Um, this is the stitching awl that I like. It has an Osborne haft, and then I put needles in it from Speedy Stitchers, and it never seems to break, and um, it just has a nice feel to it. So I'm just I'm going to take a long piece of thread, maybe a couple times my wide open arms. It's not quite long enough. That's okay. You can add on to, to it whenever you need to. So this stitching all has a eye here in the needle. And it uh, doesn't matter which way you pull it in, but it will pull the thread through. Um, I'm going to take this last out. On bigger shoes, you have to have a little lasting jack to pull the shoe off. But for this one, I can just slip it out. Okay, so I'm going to start somewhere here in the inside of the shoe. And I'm poking my stitching all through, all the way up, as the term goes, to the hilt. So it's all the way through. Then I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to push on the shoe with my thumb and then pull, pull the thread back. And just like if you know anything about sewing machines, there's one side of the needle that has a groove and the other side doesn't have a groove. So pretty soon the side that does have a groove is going to start um, getting stuck into the groove. Um, especially this thread needs to be something waxy so that it will stick in the groove. So this part coming out the side of the needle with no groove is the one that I'm going to pull to the back and that's going to become a bobbin thread if you're familiar with sewing machines, the under thread. So then I'll pull the needle to the top and uh, go in the next hole Pull it back. I'm going to check with my fingernail and see, because it takes a few times before it really gets st sticky. And here's the one that, the loop that um, 
if I push here that loop forms. So I'm just going to take a pinch of the bobbin thread that's close to this loop, stick it through, and pull it out. Pull on both sides. Now I want to get this, these threads are they're interlocking like that. And you want that interlocking spot to be kind of in the middle of where the sole is. So not you don't want to see the join of the two threads on the top of the upper or under at the sole. So somewhere in between. Um, so that's so I grab each for each stitch, I grab the stitches, I bring the join to the top and then pull it so it seems like it goes about halfway down. And then I give it a good tug. And so that's why I like the natural rubber in that you can really pull it up so the stitches are not right down on the ground, even though you'll find that the periphery of a uh, shoe really doesn't touch the, the ground very much. So these stitches should stay in there quite well. But if not, you know how to restitch. After that first stitch, I want to even out the lengths of the threads. Okay, got it. They're the same length. Okay, so I'm just going to continue this process. Hook it in, pull back, check with my nail to be sure that the one with the no groove uh, bows out. Pinch and bring it through. Pull it back. Now I have interlocking stitches. And I'm going to pull it to the top, then pull it what I think is about halfway down and give a good tug so that I'm pulling up the, the stitches um, so that they won't actually be touching the ground. To finish the shoe, um, we need to sand the edges so that these are all smooth and lined up. The turned out upper, the top sole, and the natural rubber bottom sole. So a belt sander is the machine that can do this job. Buff the vegetable tan leather uh, edge a little bit and then the boot will be finished. I put a glove on. I usually do use a glove now that I've uh, torn up so many fingernails with this buffer. Um, so I recommend that you do that also. And uh, so I've got some beeswax on there and I'll give it a little buffing. Got a nice, nice edge on our shoe now. Feel, feel like it's really a finished product.